All right, folks, welcome to another episode of Ape Answers, the amateur radio show where we answer your questions. In today's episode, number 18, we were asked a question about identifying unknown toroids. Let's take a look. So our friend, Cliftonhead9665, asked a question, I'll subject a little. I have found five toroids, size 2.4 inches by 1.4 inches by 0.5 inches, that look like an FT-240-43 toroid. Is there a way to check and see if they are FT-240-43s? I place these with known good FT-240-43s and they match size in every way. Well, this is where it gets a little bit difficult because a lot of toroids look like other ones and a lot of them are all the same size. So the only real way that you can do this is by characterizing them with an instrument of some sort. In this video, we're going to characterize them with the Siglent SAA, I'm sorry, SSA 3021X. Now, this picture is of the 3032X. The reason being is I couldn't find a good picture of the 3021X. But you could do the similar test with an NOVNA, for example, using an S21 log mag measurement. For our measurement, we are going to inject a source signal from the tracking generator here. It's going to go through a test fixture. I'll roll a picture of that in in a second. And then it's going to go through our toroid into the RF input so we can do the characterization. Okay, so what you can see here is I have an adapter connected to the output of the tracking generator source and the input on the spectrum analyzer. And then I have a banana, some people call this a Cobra head a BNC connector, but I call it a banana jack connector. And we have two wires, one for the shield in black and then one for the center conductor in red. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this fixture in order to do a normalized trace. And I'll show you that with the interface to the spectrum analyzer. And that way we can get a baseline that we can use to do our measurement. So what we're going to do is we're going to in inject a uh, signal from the TG source and we should see some loss as it goes through the toroidal core and that will allow us to do our characterization. So here is how the toroids will be configured. I just replaced the red wire with a wire that's wrapped around the toroid. Here you can see we have just plain hookup wire, solid copper core wrapped 10 times around each toroid in a similar fashion. It's uh, not exact, but it's close enough that we should be able to characterize these things. Uh, the first core is the unknown core. We'll get a better look at that in a second. Then uh, we're gonna test a core that is a 43 or a 31, and then we're gonna compare our results. Okay, so here we have a couple of different toroidal cores. These are all FT240s, which that means they are 2.4 inches in diameter across. There are various mixes though, and what I recommend is that whenever you get these in the mail or buy them at the ham fest or wherever you're getting them, you immediately mark your cores with the mix types. You can see 31, 43, 52, and 61. Now you can take a look at these and sometimes the, the finish on them is a little bit different, but it can be very hard to tell, especially if you don't have a lot of experience with cores. So what I would suggest is a test like this where we characterize the cores. This is one of two, here's the other one, cores that I got a long time ago. Uh, years ago. And when I bought these, I wasn't planning on having as many cores as I do today. And I never labeled them. Uh, I'm pretty certain these are 43s, but they may be 31s. I'm not 100% sure. I'm like 99% sure they're 43s. Uh, so what we did is, is that we wrapped one of the unknown cores to characterize. And then I've got another 43 here that we're going to compare it against. And here is a 31 that we're going to compare it against. The number of wraps doesn't matter that much, but it needs to be consistent across all your cores. I just picked 10 because it was a nice even number, and it's a number I've used when I've done this test in the past. Let's fire up the spectrum analyzer and take a look at it. We're gonna use computer control for it, so it'll be easy to see. Okay, here are the controls for the Siglent spectrum analyzer. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna come up here to this tab called TG for tracking generator, and I'm gonna change the state to on. Now you can see that we have the squiggly line here that needs to be normalized. That means it needs to be adjusted or calibrated to take care of these variants in signal degradation that we're seeing. So I'm just gonna hit this normalize state button. And there you go. We have at our reference level of zero up here, we have a straight line that goes all the way across. The next thing I'm gonna do is go over to my frequency and I'm gonna adjust my stop to 500 megahertz.
Oh boy, and then look at that. I kind of messed that up a little bit. Let's go back to tracking generator and let's renormalize. There we go. And we are good there. Uh, the reason that I'm only going to 500 uh, megahertz is because I usually characterize these at HF, UHF, and VHF. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to insert the um, unknown core into the circuit, and then we can characterize that. So stay tuned. Okay, so here you can see the characterization of the unknown core. What I want to do is I want to see if I can copy this to a different trace. So let's just go down to trace number four. And we are going to do clear right. And there we go. Okay, so what we have is the trace that we captured for our unknown core in green. And then right now the yellow line is open, meaning I have no core connected. So let's connect the Mix 31 core. Okay, the Mix 31 core is connected, and then you can see that these traces are not consistent. So that would mean that our unknown core is not a Mix 31. Let's go ahead and hook up a known Mix 43 core. And then here you can see the trace for the known 43 core, and it's pretty dang on close. It's a little bit off. That might have something to do with the length of the leads or the closeness of the windings or wraps that I put on there. But based off these results, I feel pretty confident saying that the unknown cores are mix 43 type cores. All right, that's it. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thanks for watching. And remember, if you ask questions, you might be featured on an upcoming Ape Answers.